I'm sorry I couldn't bring you with me for this adventure. But I've been on the internet since the older memes were created. And there are two things I know about welding on the internet. One is don't. And two is don't. There are seemingly a million master welders out there who the minute you pick up a torch on camera start to criticise. And I can tell you I'm nothing more than a pig with a mig. I've graduated from preg with a stick. So I've relocated the exhaust. And yes, I chickened out and I've used a piece of this amazing Helix Flexi stuff. It's going to get wrapped in um, exhaust wrap anyway. But suffice to say, it's on. And for those who doubt, there are some mounts, this one being the major one. It is um, not going anywhere. I am in the process of rerouting cables and stuff to keep them away from where it snakes around under the headstock. Um, I've already moved the throttle cable and the wiring and I'm just going to spin the brake hose around so that it doesn't come anywhere near that even when the uh, steering is turned. And then we'll get some wrap in, we'll wrap that up. Um, and then that will be the end of uh, relocating the exhaust. Another last minute item to mop up. I'm just going to cut a new air filter. Um, you probably could buy a factory-esque replacement for this, but uh, it's a lot cheaper just to go for a piece of this generic air filter foam because um, you can get quite a few filters out of it over time. Just a case of cut the old one on top of the new material, mark it out. Not rocket surgery, um, and then this will just get trapped behind this piece inside the air box. And there's your air filter. This line here is a breather line or a vent line, I guess, to drop any um, water that accumulates in the air box out. I'm sticking a bolt in, it's quite soft plastic, and I'm just going to screw that bolt in, let it seal itself. Um, because when we're going through deep water we don't want it to come back up through here and flood the air box. I'm also going to follow the passage of the air box up and probably seal the original exit and drill a hole in the top here and then get a snorkel coming out as high up as I can on the back. Um, maybe just under the seat area somewhere or maybe even out to the side here back where I've got this sort of spare area by the exhaust and uh, that way it should afford us the ability to go through slightly deeper water make sure that we've got a good seal going on back here with our car boot and then I think there's also a, a pipe here vent pipe that runs into the carb that maybe we'll tie into here and uh, that way we should have everything sealed up and we should be able to go through, at least momentarily, uh, water quite a bit deeper than we ever would have been able to go through with a stock bike. Because at the moment, sort of wading depth is about here and I've already hit water that's a bit higher than that because the, the whole bike is not particularly tall. So I'll get on with that and um, also make sure that we've got decent O-rings in this air filter box uh, so that we can... Uh, be slightly more confident on the trails. Okay, I've tidied up the garage and I've put the heat wrap on the exhaust. Gone for this nice gold stuff so it matches the um, gold on the bike. Gone all the way around the front. Done a little bit of um, rejigging of cables just to move stuff so that it falls outside of the danger zone. Um, although the temperature is much reduced with this wrap on. Bit of a tip if you're ever fitting this stuff, if you can take the exhaust off to do it, do. That's how you get this nice even pattern because you need to put a lot of tension on it. And secondly, don't do this stuff dry. Soak it first. Um, I pop mine in that sweet shop box there because that keeps the dust and the fiberglass down. Otherwise, 
your hands will itch like crazy, as will anything else in the vicinity, and you'll breathe it, and just don't. So yeah, wet it down, take the exhaust off if you can, keep it nice and tight as you're wrapping it. Whenever you need to stop to adjust something, stick one of these ties on. Um, sort of a trick for these is, they're not very good, generally speaking, so when you're fitting them, um, when you've got the loose end, if you imagine that this is the uh, the kind of piece that you pull it through, wrap your pliers, cut it off, leave, I think it's usually a couple of centimetres, get it in your pliers and then twist your pliers a bit like a um, corned beef tin, and that will do one or two things. It will roll the end piece under, and it will also pull it tight and stop it going back through. You can see, hopefully I've got one, right here where I've rolled this, it means the sharp edge isn't sticking out. Um, and it also means that it can't pull itself undone, because yeah, the quality of those metal cable ties is pretty poo. Anyway, I left the bike to run outside until everything had dried off. Took it for a bit of a blast. That's that, this stuff is now sort of set in place. Um, it hasn't discoloured too badly yet, but then haven't been anywhere particularly quickly with high exhaust temperatures. But uh, from our little green laning experience the other day, I'd say that it's quite well attached. Nothing's fallen off yet. I'm uh, leaving this area open here because I might try and reroute the intake for the air box, as I mentioned in a previous clip, so that it comes out. I can sort of bring it out here um, and just bring it up as high as I possibly can because at the moment it's probably about here and I've already had the water up to here it's a it's a very short bike um, and then as I mentioned previously just making sure all of the breathers are tied into the airbox and if the airbox is getting its air from up high and the breathers are breathing through the airbox then we should be safe to go as deep as the height of the snorkel assuming the seals in the carb are still good and don't let the water suck past the spindles and stuff like that but we'll find out so I think that's it for now. Uh, time to get on with grand challengey things. I might bring you back for a quick look at what I'm going to take in my kind of emergency toolkit bag um, and then maybe look at what the cheapest possible solution for luggage we can get for the bike is as well. Other than that, um, I might actually go for a ride. See you all later and uh, cheers for watching.